Yeah, so I, I do think there will be more uh, rallies in this bear cycle. I think this is going to turn out to be one of the longer bear cycles that we've experienced in a long, long time, mainly because if you look at the past bear markets, they've been shortened because of the Federal Reserve printing money, right, and, and stimulating and the government stimulating. So I think that without that, it puts us in a kind of a serious situation that this could be an extended bear market. Now, a bear market is never fun, but it does offer opportunities, and I do think you will get multiple big rallies, 5, 10, even 15% rallies from mm. low pivots. But again, it's, it's going to be a, a stock picker's market and you got to be nimble. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Gareth Soloway updates about the key reasons behind Bitcoin's September crash, chances of a recession, peak inflation, and money printing. Gareth Soloway also shares his perspective about Ethereum's Bellatrix upgrade. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Gareth Soloway gives a crucial warning about Bitcoin bear market rallies. Right, we've seen the dollar continue to ratchet up day after day after day, and Bitcoin was just going sideways. So you could actually say, okay, Bitcoin was holding up. But I look at today's up move in the dollar as potentially the straw that broke the camel's back with Bitcoin. It's just so much pressure from a rising dollar and risk assets. I mean, we've seen the stock market rolling over and Bitcoin for the last 10 days or so has just gone sideways. So it was yeah. almost inevitable if the dollar was going to keep going up, that at some point we were going to break down here. And you could see a nasty red candle here. Uh, now, yeah. we do have potential support coming in around 17.5. That's going to be mm -hmm. a big level. That's the June low. But my guess is that could be where we're headed at this point. But again, you know, I, I was optimistic the last few days, you know, looking at Bitcoin holding up and, and holding up for multiple days. And today's kind of like a, the wind coming out of the sails, if you will. The crypto market is struggling as investors weigh the macro outlook and contemplate the Fed's next moves. Markets are coming off an August jobs report last week that still suggests the labor market is strong. The U.S. added 315,000 jobs in August, which will beat estimates. The U.S. unemployment rate also ticked higher in August and now sits at 3.7%, which is still a very healthy number. This is the S&P chart, the S&P 500. You can see that massive rally that you were just talking about, that yep. bear market rally. Um, and then look at how quickly we've given it up in, in less time. Mm -hmm. Now we have hit some support right in here. You can see these little pivot points. So this does mean that there is a chance we could get a short term bounce here. But I'm still in the camp that I think, you know, thinking about what the Fed is doing, how they're now unloading their balance sheet, they're raising interest rates, and they're likely going to raise at least by another 50 basis points in September. I think that you could by year end or early 2023 retest the March or February 2020 highs right here before that COVID dip. So that's my target. And again, end of year, early 2023. The job market is weird in the sense that while economists want to see a healthy labor market, the Fed almost needs to see some deterioration to stop hiking interest rates. This makes riskier assets like cryptocurrencies less appealing to invest in. The longer and more aggressively the Fed raises rates, the worse it will likely be for the likes of Bitcoin and Ethereum. The Fed is expected to raise its benchmark overnight lending rate by 0.5% or 0.75% at its September meeting, and I don't think the recent job report has ruled either option out yet. The upcoming reading of the Consumer Price Index next week will likely play a big role in the Fed's decision. Yeah, so near term, it's more that that these headlines will trigger people to say, OK, you know, governments um, and maybe central banks are willing to still step up and stimulate if things get too rocky out there. I think that mm -hmm. this is just the very beginning. And if, if in the article, it talks about very minimal kind of intervention. But the point is, is that if they're already willing to kind of come in a little bit, what happens when things get worse and how many other central banks, how many other governments are willing to come to the rescue as you see the population start to kind of create this uproar? And again, we've seen this time and time again, how the more rough the period in the economy is, the, the politicians, which have to be reelected, well, guess what? You know, they're, they just look at a four year span, at least here in the United exactly. States. So they're like, well, we got to print because I need to get reelected. And, and you'll see more and more of that. Now, I still think there's a rough road to go. But there will be a pivot point where you even see the U.S., the U.K., Europe, Japan, they're all going to start to do this.
Yeah, yeah. So I mean, for, for me, what I'm seeing is that that you do have some money that's still going the traditional route. But there's a lot of money that that looks at it and says, that's the old school way of doing it. And I think right. the Wall Street bets crowd, I mean, I think these newer investors are very much into doing things themselves, finding the next hidden gem, and uh, and they're trying to do it themselves. And again, that has that's positive and negative, right? If you don't know what mm -hmm. you're doing, you can get hammered. But at the same time, maybe you can do better than than the overall allocation. In other news, Ethereum next week is expected to complete its long-awaited merge in which the network will cease operating on a proof-of-work or POW mechanism and begin operating on a proof-of-stake or POS mechanism. POW is when crypto miners use lots of computing power to solve a cryptographic puzzle as fast as possible, which then allows them to validate transactions, form new blocks, and mine tokens. In POS, miners stake their existing tokens and get entered into what is essentially a lottery system to get the opportunity to validate transactions and earn tokens. POS is a lot more energy efficient than POW. So I do think just like we saw a jobs number that came in a little bit better than expected, kind of in that Goldilocks range, I do think you're going to see a continued kind of relaxation of the CPI numbers. And I think that's going to give the Fed that ability to say, hey, listen, we're still going to keep the pedal to the metal. We're still going to do 50 basis points in September. But I think you're going to see the economy weaken more and more towards the end of the year. And they're going to back off to the point where my guess is only another 25 basis points into year end. Now, the problem here is, number one, that's going to be viewed as it's very bullish for risk assets in the yeah. near term until we slip into a recession and the market and all the investors out there, they look around and they say, OK, Fed, we're in a recession. Come get us out of this now. And the mm -hmm. Fed's going to say, well, it's not a depression yet. So we're not going to, with inflation still at four, five, six percent, we are not going to print. And that's going to freak the markets out. The market yeah. is so addicted to knowing that the Fed is, the Fed is like the, the parents, right? And they have this little kid and they, you know, every, you know, the, the kid falls and, and the parents kind of just catch them. But at some point, the Fed is going to be hand tied here, handcuffed. And I think that point is coming late this year, early next year. Ethereum had been rising in anticipation of the merge yesterday, although the price today appears to be following the rest of the crypto market. This action seems related to much of the same fearful sentiment that the market has had all year. If the Fed continues to look hawkish, crypto tends to struggle, similarly to most stocks. Yeah, so I have it penciled at only a 50 basis point in September. Um, and I think, again, the last jobs report gave the Fed that little door opening. And I think the Fed is very aware here, right? So the Fed is aware that they can't stimulate if they push us into a recession and it gets bad. So they, even though they have to talk a tough game because they have to keep expectations high so the equity markets don't surge and which creates more inflation, they also can't overdo it. And I think they're looking to kind of take a back step. Now, remember, they've just started this month unloading their balance sheet. So in a weird way, that's tightening as well. So they have to be really careful here not to do 75 basis points, unload a trillion dollars from their balance I mean, there's a lot here that could go wrong. And so that's where I am at, where I think that the Fed will probably start to do that 50 and then maybe 25 the rest of the year and kind of let's see how it plays out. I think the markets have priced in more. So I think there's a technical risk asset bounce that when the markets start to see 50 basis points is only coming and maybe only 25 or 50 into year end, then the markets will say, OK, let's breathe a sigh of relief. That will be the relief until we slip into recession when they're like, yeah. oh, my goodness. Now, how do we get out of this? Bitcoin has been largely able to avoid the sell-off that has hit the stock market in recent weeks, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average and S&P 500 both down almost 3% in the past five sessions. Cryptocurrencies should, in theory, trade as uncorrelated assets, but have shown to be linked to swings in other risk-sensitive assets, particularly stocks. Bitcoin has avoided the outsized downside it has been vulnerable to in the past. The second factor is a continued route in the currency market where most major currencies have lost out drastically to the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar index, which measures the greenback against a basket of six peers, has climbed 14% so far this year. A strengthening dollar has been a significant headwind to Bitcoin prices in the past. So, what do you think about Ethereum's Bellatrix upgrade? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.